In this video, let me show you how I make Blender up to four to 10 times faster for completely free. You heard that right. This video is not clickbait, but please don't confuse this with making rendering four to 10 times faster, though I might make a separate video on that. What I'm talking about in this video is viewport rendering. That's when you're playing back the preview of your animation inside Blender. Just some background about me before we get started. My name is Massimo and I work inside Blender primarily making point cloud animations. And on this channel, I post content, not just for Blender artists, but all artists alike, on creative insights that you should be keeping a know on, as well as deeper dives into my own creative work. So if you wanna be a part of that, then stick around. But anyway, let's hop right into the video. So over here, I have two versions of Blender open. This one is the one that I've previously worked in for quite a while now. This is version 4.2. And then I also have a newer version, which is 4.5. This is actually the beta, but by the time you're seeing this video, chances are it will be not the beta, just a long-term support version of 4.5 or even a later version of Blender. But if I play back this animation, here's just the unmodified scene. If you wanna watch the full thing, then you can watch it on my YouTube channel. I'll have it linked. In this project file, I have a baked point cloud simulation for both the character as well as the scene itself. And you can see that we're around four to five FPS max. It isn't really going higher than that. So now I'm gonna switch to Blender 4.5. This is the same exact scene, didn't change anything. I just have it opened in a newer version with the setting that I'm gonna show you in a bit. Once I press play, immediately right off the bat, you see it starts at six, then it slowly hovers up to 10. It's getting all of that simulation in the cache. And you do need to give it a, quite a bit. This is a heavy scene, just give it a moment. But you can see with this version of Blender, which we're using 4.5, night and day difference, it's four times faster right off the bat without changing anything or doing any optimizations. In 4.2, we were having about five frames per second in the viewport. In here, we're having around 21 to 22 FPS inside the viewport, which is over a four times increase in render preview FPS. And where this comes very handy is when you're looking at the preview of what you animate before you hit render, because back in the older version, 5 FPS, you really couldn't precisely see exactly how the movement was. But now, even though we still aren't at that real time 30 FPS, with 22 FPS, we're at least getting a really close representation of how the movement flows inside this animation. And another tip, I believe by default in Blender, the playback sync is set to play every frame, which does look a little bit smoother but as it says, it plays every frame, so things aren't at the actual speed your animation is. If you're trying to gauge the real-time motion of your piece, you have to set it to frame dropping. That'll give you a more accurate representation. If your computer still can't handle this, you can always go and render a viewport animation right here, but I won't be covering that in this video. So the way to do this is you just need to install a newer version of Blender. I believe this is available in Blender 4.5 beta, maybe in some earlier version, but I know for certain it's in this beta as well as the next future versions of Blender. And you wanna go into Edit, Preferences, System, and then in your display graphics, you wanna change the backend from OpenGL to Vulkan. Essentially, it's this new rendering API that allows for tenfold or four to 10 times increase viewport performance inside Blender for no extra cost. I actually did check my task manager as well when I was playing back the viewport preview in the older version as well as the newer version. And it seems like it is taking more advantage of my CPU. So not only is it more efficient, but it does use more of your hardware, which is a good thing. The bonus tip, I actually wanna hop into another project file where it is actually playing at a real time 30 FPS. This is one of my point cloud animations. In fact, this one has been in a few places around the world. If you do want to learn more about how I make these point clouds inside Blender, I have a paid course that goes over it all. It's in the description. But here, how did I get this point cloud to play back in real time? It's not just because I have a powerful CPU. Let's just hop into the node network and you can see that, what is this? Why is it a camera call? Hello, hello. And if we go into the node setup for each object, right now you can see that we're running at a real time of 30 FPS, but 
if I just disable the bake for each of these, you can see how the frame rate starts dropping. We went all the way down to 11, and now we're going around 8 FPS, which is kind of bad. If we go back into layout, we can see that it's just a whole lot slower. I'm on the same hardware. I didn't change anything. The only difference is that I baked this geometry node setup, and it's not even a simulation node setup. If you have a geometry node setup where things are changing every single frame, baking it, even though it's not a simulation, can greatly increase your viewport performance. As you can see, I'm gonna re-enable it and you could just see how quickly things will start speeding up again. Back to 30 FPS, just like that. So if you're lazy and didn't watch the whole video and just skip to the end, just enable Vulkan in newer Blender versions and also use the baking node while you're working inside Blender for a free FPS boost, even if you're not using simulation nodes. That's the end of this video. If you want to learn more about my creative process, or videos on how to navigate the creative world, be sure to subscribe. Lots more coming, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.